Hello bike farmers. Welcome back to another episode. We got ourselves a barn bike here. I was in the bike mobile yesterday at a customer's house and was test riding a bike and test rode their bike into their shed. It was out in the country and I saw this bike sitting there. It was all dusty, flat tires, um, completely filthy, but I could tell underneath all that filth was a perfectly good bicycle. So I uh, told them I'd take it in on trade towards the service I was doing on some of their other bikes and brought it home. So we're gonna pull it out of the van, give you a quick look at it. We'll take it inside and I think it's only gonna take me about a half hour or so to clean this thing up, lube all the cables, and I think we got a perfectly good bike when we get done. So let's grab this thing. <laughs> She's dirty. Yeah, you can see just how it's kind of all got this layer of filth on it. It's been that way. You know, it's really, this bike's been sitting for years in that shed. But I think once we get all that filth off and pull those cables out and clean this thing up, we're gonna have a perfectly good little bike do a little bit of a tour of filth. You can just see how, oh, focus. See if we can really do this in a half hour. First step, I'm just gonna pop the wheels off right away. Get the wheels off. Um, so these shifters are really gummed up. I think what I'll do is just right away I'm gonna hit them with the speed clean. You know, if you have brake cleaner from your auto parts store, that works pretty good for this too. Um, and you gotta figure out a way to get it in there. There it is. Get it from the top. Just flood it. Yep, and it already is waking up. There, clicking. So we'll uh, probably hit that again later. You know, just get a bunch in there and kind of work it. Okay, then I'm gonna disconnect all the cables right away. And that gives me real good access to the whole frame. Um, we got a pump bracket here, but no pump. So we'll just take that off and set the screws aside and put those on after everything's all cleaned up. It's easier to clean a bike frame without your bottle screws. Toss the pump bracket aside. All right, so I'm gonna start with Dawn Power Wash. And just do the whole thing here.
And this stuff actually dries super fast. It's ridiculous. Um, so the sooner you can get the rag wet, the better. <clears throat> I don't know why I start with the back of the bike always, but I always, I guess it's because that's how we read, right? Left to right. So the idea here, I'm not doing, this isn't like the total clean, the total polish. I'm just knocking off the cobwebs, the, the real thick stuff. <coughs> I have a medium clean rag here. Just because I can tell that this is a clean bike underneath the filth. Um, the customer did say that she like never really rode the thing. So it's kind of been sitting since day one. It's a true barn find in that respect where, you know, you think it's gonna be a Mercedes-Benz or a Porsche, and you buy that property out in the country and you go out to the shed and move all the junk and there's a 300 SL Gullwing coupe. Well, this isn't that. This is more like a 70s Mustang, maybe. Just a good bike. All right. Still, so all of the, everything that I sprayed is already kind of dried on here. But we're gonna go through and we'll be cleaning and polishing as we go as well. Okay, so all of my cables are super loose and flopping around and everything. So I'm gonna give you a different angle here. Give you a view of the front. So um, the front brake cable is a little different. You can't, there's no real good way to disconnect that. So we're just gonna feed a little bit of lube down into it and let gravity help us out. All of the lube that was on this bike has gotten old and gunky. So nothing was really moving freely, but nothing's rusty either. So we're okay in that department. Oh, I see a housing problem here. Uh, I think I might cheat a little bit. Just make this functional for now. Just kind of trim those bits. The proper fix here, if I don't cut my cable, would be to pull that cable out and replace that ferrule. Oh, we're probably going to have to shoot. All right, well, that might delay things. Might make a 30 minute or tough. Let's just do it. I'm going to pull the loosen the anchor bolt down here and pull this cable out and hopefully nothing frays. Save the the wubby dubby. That's what I call those. All right so to show you what I got going on here you can see the housing is pulling through the ferrule. So we'll just cut that end off. Cut that end off. Find ourselves some good five millimeter shift ferrules. New 
ferrules. And then lube the cable. Be very careful at this point. You don't want that cable fraying. And it did, it frayed. <laughs> uh, that's haste makes waste, folks. So much for a 30 minute quickie. That's not the right screwdriver. There we go. These, uh, if, you get, if you don't have a set of JIS screwdrivers, everything on a bike pretty much all of these Phillips heads, they're not really Phillips heads, they're JIS standards, Japanese industrial standard, I think. Um, but they work way better. Dropping screws. This is my first time fixing a bike. So, new cable here. You think they could make it any tougher? Oh, there we go. Shift it into the low gear, that helps. This is just a sharpened spoke. Makes for a good poker tool. Helps with this sort of deal. So, I mean, since we got this opened up, there you go. Nice and clean. Holy shit. I actually found it. Look at that. I've always called the floor of a bike shop the abyss. Because you drop stuff on this floor and it's gone. Some people keep their shops nice and clean. I think that's crazy. How do you get anything done if you're always cleaning? Oh. My indicator's off. There, that should work, right? Everything's got to be just so, doesn't it? All right, have your indicator set down one, and then I always make these videos in the morning with the coffee jitters. Sure makes this fine stuff more difficult. Should be doing this in the afternoon. But that's when I make all my money, so. There we go. Now we're humming, and we have a nice brand new stainless steel slick cable. You can always replace the housing at this point too, if you really want to. Doesn't seem to be entirely necessary with this bike. You know, we cut off maybe a half a centimeter. All right, back to it. Brake 
cable. Good. Okay, then get all of our pieces of housing back in their homes. <clears throat> Here's the front housing that we replaced. Polishing, polishing. More polishing. Okay, reconnect this front derailleur cable. Make sure I'm in my low gear. Anchor that down. So yeah, you do find some surprises like failing ferrules, which I didn't expect on this bike, but we're past it. No biggie. That's what I do with my old cables and then toss them in the garbage. Work on the wheel. I'll put you, give you the dirty side. can see all this filth in there but try to do this left-handed give her one of those and then get your finger up in there and get all that filth out of there The neighbors of this place where I found this bike had peacocks. It's kind of fun to work out in the driveway and hear the peacocks yelling at each other. Beautiful birds, but they're kind of a nuisance. Customer was saying they like to come over to their property and poop. They probably scream the whole time too, they're so loud. But man, they're cool looking. You know, they're like prehistoric and colorful. Polishing, polishing. Hey, this is a good angle for cleaning a wheel, huh? See, I'm learning as I go. I really appreciate you watching. I'm trying to grow this channel. My uh, normal business model. So right now it's June in Wisconsin. So our bike season is really short, about five months. I get maybe six. 
you know, but March through September. Otherwise, October 1st comes around and everything dies. And, and I have a mobile bike shop called the Bike Mobile, which you saw, and Gibbs Bike Shop, which is my brick and mortar shop. And I don't really work in the winter. And I try to make enough money to kind of cover the bills and then I just try to side hustle my way through the winter. But anyway, what I'm hoping to do is have this channel and maybe get a little bit of supplemental income out of it to make those winters a little bit easier for me. But if I get things humming, I can uh, be doing a lot of used bikes. If I collect enough used bikes over the summer during bike season, then I can be fixing them up and making videos for you. So that's the plan. Um, but in order for it to work, I need subscribers. I need you to like. I need you to hit the notification. And you come along for the ride. Come along for the ride with the bike farmer. So this wheel is very clean and quite true, as one might expect. Oh, thought I had it with just that one tweak. But it's gonna be a three tweaker. It's good enough. It's very good actually. Pretty clean. Uh, maybe it'll be a 45 minute bicycle transformation. I could edit it down to a half hour. I could cut out the front derailleur cable. Little thing, little snafu. I like to be honest though. Editing is cheating. Maybe not. It's not a lot of bike shops that'll do used bikes because all this work, like what, is it worth it? And the reality is, I think it is. I think a good used bike, you know, a decent quality used bike like this one, you know, somebody pays, I mean, it depends on your market, right? But let's say that somebody goes to Target and buys a brand new Target bike for I don't even know how much they are, 350 bucks. They're getting really low quality, not the worst, but really low quality, rideable bike that isn't assembled properly, isn't tuned, isn't lubed, isn't checked over by a mechanic, and it's gonna break. And then they gotta take it to the bike shop and figure $100 minimum for what it, you know, to get that thing assembled properly. So you're at 450 bucks and you still have a really low quality bike. Or you could go to a used bike store that has a shop quality bike like this one. Very nice, very durable, very serviceable, lasts forever. Could sit in a barn for 20 years and be good as new. Um, and fully tuned up and reconditioned for three to 400 bucks is a hell of a deal, in my opinion. You just end up with a much better product in the end. So that's my business model. And I use, generally use um, rule of one third or better. So if I think I can get 400 bucks for this bike, the most I'd pay for it would be $133. Probably closer to 100. So that leaves, if I can get four for it, that means that I get about 300 bucks profit which is pretty good, you know? If I can do that every day, you know, 300 bucks a day is, a, is enough for a small business, you know, solopreneur, you know, and you gotta create the market. It didn't happen overnight, it took me a while. And meanwhile, I can do tune-ups for 100 bucks a piece and, or more, depending, but 
my general rule of thumb is I try to get a hundred bucks out of every bike and um, depending on the situation you know I can tune up a bike in a half hour to an hour sometimes they're even faster but I usually don't charge the full rate um, but that's good money too so if I can do a few of those every day start doing the math it adds up and you, it didn't start that way I mean it was one bike at a time if I did you know 10 bikes in a week starting out it was a good week and I was happy to make you know a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks that week but now I set my target on a thousand bucks a day all right I'm gonna drop a little lube in these brake pivots quick I already have all my cables lubed up, ready to go. So now we just put the bike back together. And I think, I do this so automatically these days. But I think what it is mostly is polishing while assembling. So this rear derailleur is filthy and so is the, the cog. One second. Cassettes, pretty dusty back here. Sometimes I'll just use one step and just squirt one step on there and clean things up. This time I power washed it first and then I'll still be spraying it with one step. I don't care if one step gets all over the place. It's a really good cleaner and lube. I like it for waking up these old chains. So a lot of times with these barn bikes, you gotta be careful because everything's super rusty. And it makes it a lot harder to clean and can mean more parts. That's part of the reason I do the one third rule um, is you never know which parts you're gonna have to replace and you never know what you're gonna run into. Um, you can do some quick service riding on the spot and you know if you're an experienced mechanic you kind of know what you're getting into and can adjust your sails as you go but general rule of thumb one third what you think you can sell it for learn that from another friend who does a pretty good job bike farming Oh, oh yeah, that's right, I replaced that cable. I was gonna say, that's way off. I haven't, haven't adjusted it yet. So if you kinda scrub things down, sometimes this makes more of a mess of things, but the brush gets in there. And then I take speed, degreaser kind of flush it off this is really expensive by the way it's kind of an expensive fast way to do things but it's very effective The speed degreaser evaporates very quickly. Polishing, polishing. Nether regions. Probably should have gotten after the nether regions with the rear wheel off. So, I should take these toe clips off. Nobody likes toe clips. But, 
in the interest of time, I'm going to leave them on. Just kind of get the straps out of the way. I'll pull them off eventually someday. Yeah, you want to make the, if you're selling bikes, and I have a used bike store, you know, so I got people test riding. You have to make it as easy as possible for people to ride the bikes. Now, I hate it when people get on the bikes with the seats not in the right position. Um, but sometimes they just hop on them and go and they don't, you know, nobody really knows or thinks about it. People don't know what they don't know. Um, so in my opinion, that's not the easiest way to ride a bike. But if they're on it and riding, then it's the easiest. Sometimes the easiest thing is to just let people be and do it the way they got to do it. But they could have a subpar experience and then you lose the sale because the seat was too low. Whereas if it was adjusted properly, they would have been like, oh, where have you been all my life? Magic modern bicycle that actually fits me. Putting these bottle screws back on. Put a little dab of grease on the threads. Kind of seals things up, prevents corrosion. Glad I checked these, they were loose. Or the bottom one was. Then you can put a drop of tri-flow on all these bolts, anywhere that water is gonna wanna collect. Um, you know, brake bosses, anchor bolts, all over the place. And uh, that just helps things from corroding in the future. Spray it with one step. I'm gonna hit the chain again with one step. Remember I uh, got a bunch of degreaser on it. So I'm gonna re-lube it. And it doesn't hurt to you know do some of this stuff three, four times. Every time you touch it, it improves a little bit more. And at some point, the system becomes saturated and you're not making any kind of meaningful change. That happens in the world too. And bureaucracies are formed. People start creating problems just to give themselves something to do so they feel important. Uh-oh. Cynical existential diatribe. Die? Dia? What's the word I'm looking for? Diatride? No. Pretty nice fork on this bike. This is, uh, you know, one of those where somebody can pay $600 for a brand new entry level bike or $400 for this one and they're getting a much better bike with this one but you know it's not a one by drive train and 29er wheels and all the other stuff that the industry has sold us over the years as being better and you know honestly if you're kind of a single purpose off-road mountain biker all that stuff is better but for a general purpose bike there's nothing wrong with a triple chain ring and 26 inch wheels I mean a real strong argument can be made that because there's a million used parts out there for these 26 inch bikes that for a general purpose bike you're far better off with a used one or an old one because everything's just cheaper especially if you're DIY okay polishing polishing Polishing. People ask me, what are you going to do? P uh, power wash the bike? And I'm like, no, I'm going to use dish soap and a rag. <laughs> so maybe power washing is better, but that just is like, I don't know, a whole nother process. I just noticed these grips 
there were bar ends on this bike. So we're going to move the grips out. Squirt a little compressed air behind them. It's hard to work with without getting in the camera, in the way of the camera. There we go. And I'll probably move those levers in as well. The clock is ticking though. It'll be an editing challenge to get this video down to 30 minutes of bike fixing. Wow, these shifters feel really good. So I'm squirting one step. Oh man, it came out the top. Man, that's flooded. Very good. So I just squirt a bunch of one step in there. through the shifting. All right, so this front one is pretty bad. I'm seeing a little bit of room for adjustment here. I'm gonna move the low limit in a smidge. Um, the angle of the derailleur looks pretty good. And we replaced this cable. So now we're gonna tension it. It's loose, which is fine. Okay, still loose. So when it's still loose like that and it feels kind of tight, I use the barrel adjuster. Do some fine tuning. Yeah, this is one of those bikes where you gotta hold the lever in to get it to shift, but when you hold the lever in, it shifts great. Some people stop at the click and they're like, my bike isn't shifting. It's like, well, I tell them, shift deliberately. Like, hold the lever until it shifts. Make sure that it's doing what you're telling it to do. Don't just wait for that false feedback that the clicks, click gives you. It's like, yeah, I know, it should be in gear just because it clicked, but it's a machine, it's a system. You gotta actually put it in gear. You know, people are used to remote controls. You hit a button, touch screen. What's it called, haptics? Is that the word when you get a audible or sensational feedback to indicate that you've accomplished something? That's what the index shifters have, is a haptic response. Haptic feedback loop. Gotta be honest with you. I have no idea if that's the right word. Look at that brake. I have not adjusted that brake. It was like that from day one. It's pretty, pretty spectacular. Yeah, I saw this bike sitting there in that barn and was like, that's going to be a good one. Love this bike. Absolutely love this bicycle. Very practical. Nice medium size. Really good for a teenage kid. Looking for a bike just to ride around town. Very durable. Very inexpensive to maintain. I mean, they could go 
I mean, you could ride the crap out of this thing for five years and not tune it up and it'd be just fine. Now you can ride the crap out of it, but you can't treat it like garbage. Park it inside or in a, hopefully an attached garage. Keep it kind of clean, lube the chain once in a while. Okay, so we get it to this point and it's very good. Ooh, this saddle is filthy. Okay, so then I take the furniture polish and I just kind of spray everything. And a nice clean white rag. Thing with the furniture polishes is even if you don't wipe it off it dries shiny you know there's no spots or it's not gooey it's just a wax that it leaves behind and the furniture polish I like the cheap stuff it seems to clean better it's not just a polish it's also a cleaner Um, Pledge does work really well too. It's a little more expensive. You can get it on Amazon and big cans. It's not so bad. Yeah, so you don't have to wipe it off, but when you do, you're really cleaning things up. Sometimes like up in shifter land here in the cockpit, you can just leave it, leave the polish and tomorrow it'll just be shiny. Get under the cables. I always forget about this part of the bike, the part that you don't see. Get underneath. Fork one more time. Polishing, polishing, polishing. How about that? Squeaky clean. Okay. You know what? I think I got a few minutes left. Time for the power drills. Power tools. Electric screwdriver. in there. Grab my switchblade. Man, that is really stuck. This is how I cut myself. There we go. Let's go back and get this one.
I have a gazillion of these straps, but these straps can come in handy if you're ever, you know, you like you see all those things like you you want to wrap cords and then put a strap around them. These are handy general purpose shop straps. They can be. There we go. So the pedals are all freed up for test rides now. I'm even polishing the the flats for the pedals where you for the wrench. It's a spot that gets rusty on bikes and if you just hit it with some lube it darkens it. Keeps rust at bay. Just take a little little something and just hit them right there. Same with the crank bolts. Okay. Now when I uh, picked the bike up yesterday, I put air in the tires. It was, they were dead flat. And I do that, because then I knew, I, I knew this morning I'd be pulling it out of the van and making this video. And the air is still in the tires, so we know that the tubes are good. So I'm just gonna top them off. You know the rule. Make them firm. Tire pressure is a personal preference. We all get to decide for ourselves. How about a satisfying, shiny drivetrain shifting shot? Oh, did you see that little hesitation? I don't like that. And then back that barrel adjuster out of some edge. Ooh, that's nice and crisp. Too tight. Good. Depends on the shifter. And by shifter, I mean the person that will be doing the shifting. Bicycles have some user input. I don't know if you knew that. You can't blame everything on the machine, folks. You are involved. You are a variable to be considered in the operation of the machine. I'm not questioning your character. No judgment, just acknowledging, just observing. Yes, I know you're a very experienced cyclist. brand new all right let's get some shiny after shots Okay, bike farmers, that is it for this bike. The Trek 4500 Alpha, Alpha Aluminum. Um, yeah, I mean, aside from the front shifter housing, there was nothing to do with this bike. It was perfectly great. You can do this with any garage sale bike, just about. Throw it up in the stand, give it a really good, you know, polishing, lube all those cables, um, check the wheels, lube the chain up, um, wipe things down. And a lot of times everything's working great. Um, you know, you just gotta clean them up a little bit. 
And uh, then again, you've seen in some of my other videos, other bikes require a whole lot more work. But when you find these, it's a real gem. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of this content, I really want to start making a lot of this stuff. Uh, it's probably going to be a few months, but I'm going to try to get a video a week out and then maybe two a week uh, over the winter. Please, please, please subscribe, like, hit the notifications, watch these things, show your friends, uh, mention it, do whatever you can to help me promote this thing. And let's get this uh, get this thing off the road. I'm gonna try to get some more stuff uh, involved in the bike mobile and maybe some other Gibbs bike shoppy things. Um, but uh, again, I'm swamped. I got uh, over here off. You know, I got my hooks are full of tune-ups, and I got to get cracking on um, my real businesses too. So, thank you again for uh, tuning in, in, tuning in, <laughs> tuning in, and I'll see you next time, bike farmers. Thank you.